The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. The idea of having a fake alien invasion is to unify the world under one umbrella to give mankind a common cause. But see, here's the problem with that. The problem is everybody knows about that. So how can it work? Not one soul would trust an alien invasion if it happened right now. Nobody would. And you know why? Because they know about a fake alien invasion. They did a survey to see who knows about, you know, possibly having a fake alien invasion. And do you know three quarters of the world knows about that? So how could it ever work? It won't work. People are going to sit there and say, oh, it's not real. That's what they'll say. It's not real. Somebody said, isn't that what Reagan said? Yes. He said, if we were facing an alien threat, then essentially the world would uh, unify, draw together. And, and the, the new world order would be established. Because Reagan was the one that said, we're going to have our new world order. That it will be installed. That's what he said. It will be installed. You know, we're going to have it. And it's going to be a good time and all this and the other. But to what end? What happens to the people? How would that actually change the people? Would they actually get together, join under one umbrella? Here the Bible teaches something different. It tells us that the number of people on the earth is going to have a steep drawdown at some point. It shows us that the beast kingdom is unified under a hatred of something. Not because of an alien invasion, but because of a hatred. That's what happens. They hated God. Now, first of all, you have to remind yourselves that, wait a minute, right now, a lot of people say, well, there, you know, God is this, uh, you know, this, this ultimate being out there. That's what they believe. That's what they actually believe. That the Anunnaki are coming. They don't know who they are. That's what they believe. That uh, some people believe they created them. A lot of people would have fear of this, that, and the other. But there's something with, with what would be the end game besides having a one world government. Why won't they do that right now? Why not? Why not just do it by force? Uh-oh. If they want a new world order, why is it taking so long for them to establish a new world order? Why? Have you guys seen the fragility or the how easy NATO actually starts to fall apart? Have you guys seen how the data drops to the bottom of the bucket through assessments when things like Ukraine and Russia take place? Have you seen how things just don't work out the plan? In fact, nothing has worked out. It just hasn't worked out. So this hearing they had today almost sounded desperate, didn't it? Ironically. I'll say this. Maybe people won't like me for this, but I'll say this. The folks that were asking the questions seemed to think it was comical. The folks that were answering the questions, they were doing the marketing. They were marketing something. Marketing. Have people gotten hurt? You better believe it. Have people lost their lives? But it's still being marketed. Now, I'm going to give you a case in point here. Because it's important that you know what, they, what they're trying to achieve here. And it's not... As straightforward as you think. I know it ruins what a lot of people think, but I have to tell you this. Nothing except the Word of God and those men and women who were spiritual and, and certain visionaries that were, uh, you know, they were billionaires, right, who would influence the industry. Everybody else's stuff has failed to come to pass. But why? All these predictions, these predictions of this, and dealing with this subject, all of them have failed. Why? It's because of you. Little old you, that's why it failed. Because of you. Why can't they force people to do what they want them to do? You're forced to have a driver's license, correct? No, you're not forced to have a driver's license. That's not how it works. If you can understand the process behind a driver's license, you'll understand what they're doing. They didn't force anybody to have a driver's license. Other people forced you to get a driver's license. The government did not. The state did not. Your family did. Your neighbors did, didn't they? Nobody else did. Did the government come and write you and force you to get your uh, driver's license? No, your family did. Your community did. People did. Normal people, average people, they did. They forced you. They said you had to have it. Because if you don't have it, you're going to be some sub-element in society. And by way of a type of peer pressure, keeping up with the Joneses, right? Making the world happy, keeping with the traditions of men. You wouldn't got your driver's license to have that privilege of driving because they call it a privilege. 
People take advantage of privileges, but the government itself did not force anybody to do it. They set up how to do it, and people forced you to do it. I want you to take that same concept and apply that to what you're what you're hearing now. The government's not, they're not in the business of forcing, actual, they haven't been forcing people to do anything because of you. But with this, they're going to get you. They're going to get you with this. They're going to have people to force things upon each other. You will demand of those around you certain things. You'll do that within a month. It'll come out. And hopefully you can remember this conversation. Hopefully you can. When they were talking about these UAPs, they took a side. They said something consistently. How many people heard it, by the way? Did anybody watch it? If you did, you would have caught that they were pushing one factor. They kept saying, these things are hostile, didn't they? That's what they said. They're hostile. Hostile. And then these congressional members with smiles on their faces. You know what they said? Did anybody uh, you know, anybody get hurt, murdered, chuckles and things of that nature? What was the answer? Oh, yes, yes. Testimony was given. Now, despite how evil they are, they do require the truth of one another. Because they require loyalty of one another. So Satan, his right-hand man, he expects his right-hand man not to lie to him. That's how Satan operates. If Satan's right-hand man cannot tell the truth to Satan, then Satan's right-hand man is not loyal. They do require, but they are loyal to one another. They can lie to you, lie to everybody else, but they cannot lie to each other. So when they're giving a testimony, believe me, they're, 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 they're stating facts about what they're saying. But they stay, whoa, 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 what are you doing? But they stayed on one specific side that never happened before, guys. Did you guys hear that? They kept saying, did these, uh, you know, did anybody get hurt or murdered? And the guy just blankly said yes. Now, we all should know, I'm telling you right now, there's, there's an individual, there's a set, a team of individuals out there. Their top's blue today. Uh, it just blew. So here it begins. They knew exactly what they were doing. There's a gentleman called Stephen Greer. Anybody here, uh, you know about Stephen Greer? This whole testimony is guaranteed to have some sort of reprisal by him. He didn't like it. He is on fire. He is in contact with the other half of folks who believe that these things are gentle and good and misunderstood, this, that, and the other. So now that this has become public, now that this is on record, now that this can be referenced, this other guy is going to rally his troops and forces and his contacts that are not quite here. They're going to start to combat the ideology that these things are evil. So that draws him out and everybody that belongs to him. That's going to sift them out of the populace. In fact, they're going to sift everybody out that would believe that these contacts would be nice. They're going to they're going to get them out, take them out of the woodwork. Because now they're set on fire. It's very difficult to discover who these people are. Now they can through this conversation. They're going to come out of the woodwork defending any EBE or any of these uh, things that people name. So you're going to have people defending these things. Now the world's going to see a lot of conversation of folks and documentaries coming out of how nice these things are and what actually happened in Roswell and what truly happened in Rendlesham Forest and all these different places that are public. And these other guys are going to tell you about the places like England where they recovered a craft full of body parts, you know, things of that nature. They're going to tell you all about it. It'll be a little war within itself. Then all of a sudden, without notice, you're going to have a fourth party. You might as well call them a fourth party. It's going to step forward directly to the people, contacting you directly, everybody directly, giving you a, a, another view on how everything is working. Because whether you know this or not, they have just put their foot in the spiritual realm. And now they're trying to interpret the spiritual realm for you. And through this topic, they're going to begin to mold the spiritual realm right before your eyes and they're going to have people believing in the spiritual realm to be a specific thing now that sounds crazy right now doesn't it? that's precisely what's going to happen see you just can't outright say hey guys guess what i think in the spiritual realm you you can't manipulate the spiritual realm in in for christians you can't do that so what you have to do is you have to take a component that is connected to the spiritual realm bring it to the forefront and then begin to interpret certain things about that uh, element from the spiritual realm in view of the people 
And when the people see it, they'll begin to question their own faith. And when they question their own faith at that moment, they're weakened. As soon as a believer is weakened, darkness is in power. It only takes that moment, like a snap of a finger, for a transition to be made globally. And then it's uh, everything is going into hyper mode then. Everything is. So what they have essentially done is present to you a scenario. A scenario where people are connected to some spiritual entity. But now they're going to manipulate and begin to interpret what the spiritual realm is for a lot of people. And people will jump to the defense first of both sides against you. Because you're going to say, no, it is it's all about Christ. But you're going to find yourself put to a corner by people who believe in this topic, who are well-versed in all the made-up stuff that nobody ever saw but them. Right? They're going to begin to fight you about what you believe in. Mark my words. You're going to be fought because of this topic. You're going to be fought. And it's not going to come from an external source. You cannot fight this by turning off your computer so that your kids can access it. This same stuff is going to be in the schools. As soon as they go back to school, it's not going to be a month before they come back and you're going to start hearing them talk about the same subject. It's going to be everywhere. Expect this subject to be everywhere. And then when people think they have a handle on it, the next big thing will happen. That'll be part of the manifestation. But by way of the subject, they will interpret the spiritual realm. Here's the bad part about it. You, because you may say, so what if they interpret the spiritual realm wrong? See, that's where you're making a mistake. When they interpret the spiritual realm, they're going to interpret this for every living soul on the earth. And you will be outnumbered. You will most certainly be outnumbered. And places of influence and places that, you know, jobs and positions that people want, if you take the Christian's side of things, ignoring everything that's being brought forth, and it began today, you're going to get ousted. You're going to be considered ignorant. They cannot use you because you won't take a side. It's, see, the, the Democrat-Republican thing did not work. If you guys take note, the entire world was watching during the time of Obama. It started with Obama. That's how it started. Now, with Obama, it was just not an American election. It was a global election. In fact, the world stopped to see his inauguration, didn't they? Then all of a sudden, something else happened. The world stopped again to see who would take his place. It stopped. The whole world was looking at the elections in the USA. The whole world was not watching what Germany was doing. They were not watching what France was doing. They didn't care what anybody else was doing. They cared what the USA was doing. That's what they cared about. It drew global attention. And as soon as things were settled here, the world continued. Have you noticed that if the USA is in a chaotic mode, the rest of the world is also in a chaotic mode? Haven't you noticed? Because they're looking to the USA to see what is good to invest in and what is not, what's good to continue with and what is not, what action is favorable to take for their people and what is not. They do everything based upon the USA, based on the USA. Even China does things based off the USA. No matter how much they hate us, right, they still do things based on us. But it did not continue to engage everybody. Here's what I believe happened. I believe that President Trump, in the beginning, came in for one cause. He came in for one cause. And you got to remember, President Trump was a TV guy. He managed uh, real estate properties, this, that, and the other. And he came in under one, with, with one agreement, he came in. But something happened. And when it happened, it was almost like an internal agreement was broken within the system itself. It's almost like he, he, he made them. Or, or he backstabbed them. He said, no, I'm not going through with, with what I initially said. Because I've noticed something about President Trump. He will, he will initiate something. But when he does not see it favorable, he'll quickly say, no, I'm not doing that anymore. Just not doing it. And I think at the beginning, he came in one way. But he became wise pretty quick and broke. Uh, he just kind of you know, separated his company from certain individuals. And so this, this war began. This thing began. All this contention began. That's what I believe happened. And then they, they tried to magnify that. They did. They tried to draw everybody in through a Democratic-Republican argument in order to subdue the world some type of way. But what they tried to do did not work. The truth is, they could have stopped what happened during, that, uh, during the election of Biden. They could have stopped that. They could have easily stopped that. 
But if you're you're listening to the news, somebody gave a stand down order. We know that by the hearings and everything else. So they were utilizing some of these failed attempts to maximize what they were doing for the world. It didn't work to this very day. It's not working. It's not engaging enough. And so all of a sudden, when the political war does not consume a lot of people within itself, here comes the UAP subject. Isn't it funny how it's perfectly timed to keep the momentum of the fight of one person against the other going? Isn't that funny how they utilize whatever can be utilized to get to you? Now, spiritually speaking, Satan does not have to get to the world. He's already got them. But Satan has a habit of influencing men to build systems that will get to you, that will cause you to lay down your faith. His entire cause is to get you to lay down your faith. Biblically, Jesus told us he stands against you. He walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's trying to get you to stop believing in Christ. If he can dethrone you just for a little while, kill our eyes. You know, even in the Bible, it says the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now liveth will let till it be taken out of the way. Then, it says, then after that, that wicked person is going to be revealed. So what's stopping the Antichrist? What's stopping the completeness of the beast system from coming forward? You are. It's because of your faith. That's why. And so long as you have faith, there are promises in your lives. There's a promise of the Lord of a process that must continue so long as you have faith. But that changes when the falling away takes place. Notice in the Bible it says that day shall not come unless there come a falling away first. Well, a falling away is when you no longer have faith. In essence, when a person comes forward within themselves and they say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm done acting. I just don't believe anymore. You know, like some of these ministers are doing. And in fact, that happens every single month. Somebody is coming forward to their to their pulpits or wherever they're coming from. They're saying, you know what? I just have to confess this. I don't believe in Christ. That's, that's what they're coming forward and saying. They don't believe in Christ and some more stuff. You don't want to hear the other stuff, but that's what they say. And the more they say this, when this started, right, when the churches of nudity started in California, things began to go downhill. Because every time a minister comes forward like that, what happens to the people? The Bible says the sheep are scattered. Now, God is faithful. So if a person is sitting under a pastor who comes out and says, guess what? I don't believe, right? God will do exactly what he said he will do to those scattered sheep. They're going to be okay. But the one, the preacher is not. The one who came out of the closet, so to speak, he's not going to be okay. But the sheep are going to be okay. Because the Lord has other people lined up for them. He has good places for them to go. That's why he's raising you. That's why many of you have the word of God within yourselves. That's why many of you, are, you feel so strongly about your faith no matter what comes. Right? No matter what you see, no matter what you hear, no matter who argues what, you have a strong faith in you. I go so far as to say that a great many of you are recipients of some of those scattered sheep in times ahead. That's what I would say. So be prepared for that. Because where are they going to go when they leave the hireling? They're coming straight to you. Those who are ready to receive some of those lost sheep, they're coming straight to you. You're receiving training right now. The Lord is raising you so that you can responsibly take care of those you are appointed to take care of. That's why many of you have been reserved up until this very day. So don't let this UAP subject, don't let it make you stumble. Be aware of it. Be aware of what they're doing. Don't let it make you stumble. In other words, don't invest all of yourself into this subject. God governs all things, and we know that. He's shown us that time and time and time again. Man cannot go to war when he wants to. Man has to be given space to fight each other. In other words, if God does not want humanity to fight at a given moment, they cannot do it. He has to empower man to do what he does. Satan can't do what he wants to do. Satan has to be empowered. Satan desires to devour you, but he cannot do it. He can only do what he's granted space to do. Because this next step is all about you. It's all about your faith. This is going to turn into a direct assault upon your faith. And you will not be able to communicate that to those who believe in this UAP, UAP um, stuff. What's about to be presented are a bunch of sides. Another conflict is going to be very confusing. See, if within the government, right, if the government were against the people, you would easily take a side, a righteous side. 
you would stand with Christ. But there's a problem when the government fights with government. They present to the populace how they think. And people naturally say, hey, I'm going to take his side. You know, it's more righteous than that side. But what people are missing is that they're fighting for a system. That's how they draw you in. They put a chessboard in front of you. And they look you dead in the eyes and say, okay, what side are you on? You know what makes me so different and so controversial? I never play chess. Not with them. Not playing chess with them. Because somebody already, you know, I'm always asked that question. What side are you on? I said, well, I don't play the game, period. So I'm on neither side. I won't play that game. But to a lot of people, they feel they have to. They put a chessboard in front of the average person, and the person gets nervous. And they start looking around. What side should I take? Not knowing that they don't have to play the game. They don't know they don't have to play that game. But they get nervous because they don't know that. Because they're trying to qualify a side. All you have to do is look inside the body of Christ. Look at what Jesus said in comparison to what's happening in the body of Christ. Especially of those who take political sides. Look what's happening. Because the Lord said that shouldn't be among us, period. But if they can get you, listen, when they can get you involved in what they're doing, you're no longer an outsider. You're not innocent of what's being done. And that's the whole point. To make you put blood on your own hands. That's the entire point. To defile you is the entire point. Because once you pick a side, what's the next thing you do? You fight with the side you chose, correct? And you fight with everything in you. You will prove people right and everything else. See, God has already said he will reveal this hidden iniquity. And when people see it, a great chastisement. Is going to be felt. A lot of people who believe, that's why in the book of Enoch, in the book of Jasper, in the book of Baruch, in the book of Esdras, it says the same thing, that people are going to realize what they have been serving. And he was talking to us, Christians, are going to realize what they have been serving, what they've been propping up, what they've been supporting. You guys have the example, listen to me. Many of you who were abused, your abuser smiled at you. Your abuser seemed to have some good cause about them, didn't they? Until they abused you. Is that correct? In fact, had they not abused you, you would have stood by their side. You would have defended them. The only thing that gave them away was their activity of abuse. That's how you found out who they were. You did not find out any other way. You were convinced there was no abuser before you. But then they abused you. Do you know what always happens that way? That people are drawn in that way? Because they see somebody doing something nice. Evil can do nice things all day, but it's still evil. A snake can nicely slither out of your way, but it's still a snake. At the end of the day, a snake is a snake. No matter how many times it does not bite you, it is still a snake. And you're going to end up bit. That's what people find out who have boa constrictors. Oh no, this is my pet snake. It'll never do that. Now, when it, it funny thing, when it bites them, they don't tell anybody. Or they'll defend it. Well, it doesn't know what it was doing. It's my fault. I didn't feed it. It's a snake. It'd be like having a pet black widow spider. Who would do that? Who would have a pet black widow spider? And before you say that would be stupid, there are people who have pet black widow spiders. It does not change what they really are. Now, God gave you discernment. But he also said this. The angels are going to harvest the garden, the wheat and the tares on the earth. The angels have that job to harvest them. We don't quite know who's truly good and who's truly evil. That is something that has to be revealed. There have been a lot of bad people that ended up being very faithful believers in Christ. There are a lot of good people who've ended up being rotten at the end. The Lord knows exactly who they are. All too often we don't. But it will be revealed. Just like the Antichrist. He'll be revealed. All these things are going to be revealed. Which means, if they have to be revealed from the Most High, there's no way we can have absolute discernment to know who is who. Or God would not have written that they will be revealed. If he's making that declaration, then nobody's going to know until they're revealed. It's just like the book of Daniel when he says, seal up the book, right? Hardly anybody can understand the book of Daniel prior to a specific time. How do we know this? Because every prediction in the book of Daniel has failed. That means the people who made the predictions based upon the book of Daniel, they couldn't possibly comprehend things correctly because the book was sealed. Not sealed where nobody could read it. Sealed, your understanding had been sealed where you could not comprehend it. 
It takes God to open up the understanding of the Word of God so that you can understand what it's saying. That's why Jesus said the Word must be discerned spiritually. It must be understood spiritually, not with the carnal mind. The carnal mind cannot comprehend the truthfulness in the Word of God. It doesn't work. Spiritually, it opens up. So, what am I saying? Don't take a side in the argument that's about to come about because of this UFO topic. Because if you do, you're almost guaranteed to start to lose your footing at a time when you need to be absolutely rooted and grounded in Christ. This is to draw you out. This is to get you absolutely involved over your head. This is to make you a part of a battle that's not yours and it's coming quickly. This is a global marker, not for a dream, but for something that's being accomplished step by step by step. This has already been foretold. But it's going to draw people out and it will turn. It will begin to turn children against parents and vice versa. It will be used as a very divisive tool. Now that means you don't shut your ear off concerning what's happening around you. The word says, what did Jesus say? Be as wise as serpents, as harmless as doves. I know that you guys don't like to hear the news. There is a benefit to having patience with the world. See, if you don't have patience, you're missing an absolute quality that God requires of you to, to really perform as he's enabled you to perform. If you don't have patience, if you shut your hearing off, you're not going to be duly informed. To hear the state of a person, you have to listen to it. See, many of you listen to the news and you get caught up in what they're speaking about. Listen to the news to see what the world cares about. Listen to the news to see what the tactics of these entities truly are. That's what you'll take away. All you have to do is exercise patience. That's all you have to do. You need to know when you are. You need to know that. Because when things begin to take place, like a bunch of lights, you know, come from... It's like somebody's going to open up a valve and here they come. That's really going to throw some people off. It will. And people, you know, some of the people, the, the, these hearings are going to be half truthful, right? Half something else. I can't, they're not going to lie. I have a, I have a high suspicion that they will not lie about a single thing. So when they're talking about crashed craft, they're going to say, yes, we have, we have dozens. When they talk about, um, um, you know, species, they're going to say, we have, we have lots Specimens, live specimens are going to say we have plenty. The problem is going to be what in the world are they talking about? Because they're not going to be talking about human beings. And while everybody's trying to figure out what solar system they came from, you should be thinking about what the Lord told you about these times, what their true origin is. Why wait so late? Why wait till now to really have this conversation? It's not because the people forced them to do it. We know that's not the truth. No, it's because now it's convenient to have it. Now certain things can be accomplished. And I do encourage anybody, right, if you missed it today, go back and watch it. But when you watch it, I am want you to do something because you believe, you believe in Christ. You guys believe in Christ, right? I want you to look at the faces of those involved. Make no evaluation. Give it a good look. Because if you belong to Christ, you're going to begin to see. You have to look past yourself. Just simply hear them. You need to see what these people look like. You need to take, take a good look. Take a good look. And I hope that you remember this when they start causing people to say, you know, a person may come to you and say, I'm having a hard time believing in my Christianity. You say, why do you say that? Well, because, you know, they're, they're giving out all this information on these UAPs. And, you know, obviously it's truthful. Obviously they exist. Nobody knows, you know, to what extent they're here for, but they're here. But it's causing me to question things of my own faith. They may come to you and say, do you think Jesus was one of them? I'm going to have an answer for that. You're not going to be talking to gullible dodo people. You're going to be talking to intelligent people who have a lot of facts in their minds. They don't have the truth, but they'll have facts. In order to communicate with them, you're going to have to speak with some of those facts. That's the language they speak. As much as it pains to pains me to say this, but the God of force is what the world is utilizing. When they say you have to trust the science, what they're telling you is that you have to trust those who evaluate the truth, who, who have the truth in the earth. They're telling you to trust the truth 
of those in the earth. Hope you know that. That's what believe the science means. That's also, if I'm not mistaken, an ancient Egyptian phrase. Trust the science. To trust the science, all you have to do is think about it. Okay, you trust the science. Who's giving the world the science? What person? What institution? Is it coming from a group or a single person? You'll find that the same handlers have the science they're telling you to trust. That's what you'll find. The only way you'll know that is to actually observe these people. Don't turn away. Don't run away. Don't turn your back. Face everything. God has empowered you to walk through all darkness on the face of this earth. And nothing can stop you. Nothing can halt you. All Satan can do to you is make you frightened of taking another step. I hope you know that. So that you don't fall for it. As far as a, this fake alien invasion stuff is too popular. It's, it's way too popular. Maybe this weekend I'll share with you something worse. And people will absolutely 100% fall for it. In fact, if it happened right, if everybody had knowledge of an alien invasion, a fake alien invasion, there's something they can do right now that would trick even you guys. And they will test the waters. They're going to see how they can trick you guys. What you're actually going to fall for. What you actually believe in. They're going to be checking social media for the feedback from these things. That's very important to them. They will check to see what you think about it. And they will fine-tune everything they say so that it throws you off guard because this is an assault it's working up to be an assault on your faith to get you off balance because it only takes one global moment of causing Christians to doubt Christ for darkness to step forward and once it has a foothold it has a foothold and it's coming they anticipate it it is coming listen don't live your lives in fear either don't do that no need for that. Everything that's happened so far has been a subdue you to get you to believe and to follow something other than Christ. Think about it. When do people get angry with you? It's when you break away from the system of things into faith. They have a problem with you. It's when you refuse to do with the world's way. It's when you do not can have it. You're not that uh, point of continuation of some of the practices, some of these immoral practices of men. They don't like that. But the Lord's going to be your, he is your shield, right? Your faith is everything. Plus, I hope you guys do know, right? I hope you guys know something about yourselves. If a person of the world were to ever try to be a good person, hear me close, if they were trying to be a good person, right? And suppose one day they said, oh, forget it, I'm going back to doing what I used to do, the, you know, the terrible things. The world would embrace them. Anybody know why? If a person of the world decided to be good, to be just like you, but after a year they found out they couldn't sustain it, and so they said, I'm going back to, you know, being the person I was. The world would embrace them, likely reward them. Anybody know why? Well, before you answer that, here's what would happen to you. If you ever decided to go be a part of the world, well, I'm going back to living my life and doing the things I did, going to the clubs, doing all that stuff, you would be destroyed. They would not embrace you. They would do everything to wipe you off the face of the earth. Anybody know why? Though? Why wouldn't the world embrace you after you decide to go be one of them? Why not? You guys have an example of that. Sodom and Gomorrah. All of us know about Sodom and Gomorrah. The Lord told them, you leave Sodom and Gomorrah and do not look back. Because if you do, you're going to be turned into a pillar of salt. Why, though? Because they never belonged, and they were never Sodom and Gomorrah themselves. They occupied a place they were never a part of. You have been in a place you have never been a part of. How many of you found out in life, right? You have this idea in your mind. You don't know where it came from. And, and there's something in you that says you, you're just not like everybody here. How many feel strongly sometimes you don't belong here? It's okay if you say it. I'm not going to sit here and say that you think you, you belong to ETs or something, but many of you feel you don't belong here. You say, well, I, how can I belong here? I don't even think along those lines. That's a wonderful thing. That's why you can never turn back to the world. Now, most of you typed a one when I said it feels like. You, you don't know where it came from, but it feels like you don't belong here. And, and a lot of people in the world feel this way. But because you're a believer in Christ, you really don't belong with the world. You don't belong 
in the world. A small, they'll never receive you. Spiritually, they can see you marked. They can see that, right? That's why you're supernaturally assaulted by every system out there. And what I mean by that, for you, for a Christian, for somebody who truly believes, there have been times in your life when things started going real good. You remember that? It started going real good. And then all of a sudden, when you got serious about Christ, weird stuff started to happen. People started to pop up to, to get in your way about things, right? So you had these supernatural assaults. And if you turn back to the world, having been marked by the living God believing, you'd be destroyed. There's a principle in the Bible, all of you guys are familiar with this, when evil, when a demonic entity, evil itself, leaves a vessel, it's always trying to come back to that vessel with seven worse, uh, let's just go ahead and say, with much more darkness. So it goes out and teams up with other things that are also dark to overpower anything that would hold it back from getting you back. But what happens if you never belong to darkness in the first place? You have no placement with them. That means they will harass you. They will attempt to get you not to believe in those, uh, in, in your case, not to believe in Christ. So if they can take your guard down, that's a shield to you. If they can ever get you to set that thing, because they can't take it from you. They cannot crack it. They can't break it. They have to convince you to set it down. That's all they can do. Hope you guys know that. The only way Satan can ever get to you is to convince you to put down your faith. Your shield of faith, Satan has to convince you to put that down. He has to convince you of that. And if you put it down, he is not going to embrace you. He's going to destroy you. You have no placement with him. All your situations have been talking to you. Anybody know what their situation has been saying? All these bad situations in your life have been, have been talking to you. They really have. They've been communicating something to you. Now use your spiritual mind so you can, you, you'll, you'll likely recall this. You'll see it. You'll see it. But you have to be truthful about your own memory of what you went through. You, you don't have to tell anybody. Just remember it. You ready? I want to tell you what your situation has been trying to get you to. Uh, it's been talking to you. It's really been talking to you guys. Your, your issue, your situation has been talking to you. It came to you, didn't it? Your situation. And it put two things before you. Right? It was asking you something. It was trying to get you to do something. It said, hey, why don't you solve this problem the way you used to do things? You know, when you were just in the world, you can get this problem out of the way. God won't like it. You know, it's not, it's not a righteous thing, but it will get this issue out of the way. Just go ahead and do it that way. Somebody know what I'm talking about? Your situation comes up to you. It threatens you first. Then all of a sudden it says... Do it the way you used to do things. Do it the crooked way. Nobody's going to know. Now, in certain cases in life, it got us. Because we were so frightened of, of having a loss of ego, a loss of you know character and stature and everything else that we gave into it. But there was also a time when you said, ha uh get away from me. There was a moment when you rebuked it. You heard your situation and you said no. Remember that? Remember you said no. And in the moment you said no, the Lord did something to him. He made it to where you had no choice but to endure that thing, didn't he? You remember that moment? You said, no, I'm not doing it that way. And then God fixed it where you had to endure the whole thing. But then all of a sudden, before you knew what was taking place, you were delivered. And you're not quite sure how. You ever been through one of those painful issues and situations? You didn't know how you were going to get out. You had no resources or something was tying your hands up or something was in the way and you had to endure it. And it was not pretty. But you were delivered. You were delivered. When it was all said and done, you were delivered. Now, I don't know about you, but do you have a clear recall of everything that happened, of how you were delivered? Because I can tell you right now, I do not. I don't have a clear recall of all the steps. I can remember the moments, the, the moments of heightened emotions. I can remember that. I do not remember all the steps. I do remember that God did that. Nobody else did that. Everything else was shut off. Everything else was tied up. Nothing else was going to work for this one. But the Lord delivered. He talked to you in that respect. And he told you something. Something you need to always remember about your deliverance. Something you should know. It's very simple. God does not show up at the beginning. No. God doesn't show up in the middle. No. God shows up at the last moment. And he delivers every single time. See, we can do it his way. The, the reason he tied your hands up, the reason 
Nobody else could help you. But you had to experience how he delivers. He was talking to you. You know what he was saying? Because if you look over the nature of your issues, and if you look at what took place, you'll find that you were delivered at the last moment. But why? Why at the last moment? Because he's telling you something. How many problems have you had that at the last moment something changed? Not in the middle, not at the beginning, but at the last possible moment something changed. How many have had situations like that? Because if you have, the Lord has been telling you something you need to know right now. That no matter what takes place, he's not coming at the beginning. He's not going to get you out of it at the beginning, not in the middle. But he'll always deliver you. That's the message. He comes at the end to let you know, hey, what are you doing? You're worried about this situation. You're full of your own emotions having a nervous breakdown. And you're going to be delivered anyway. That's why you go through the issue. And then at the last moment, he delivers you every single time. So you're still here. If your situation consumed you, there's no way you could be here. You couldn't be here. You'd be dead. You'd be done for, doomed. But you're not. So he's telling you despite what you see with your eyes, despite what your logical mind interprets for you, he delivers you regardless. Do you know your life is like that? Your whole life. See, many of you have been here for a while. And sometimes you think, well, the Lord may not come for another 6,000 years. Your mind shouldn't be on the timing at all. Just like your issues. Just as he carried you through beyond your, you made a declaration that you weren't going to make it. You did. You said, I'm not going to make it. This is not going to work out. I can never get out of this issue. That's what you said. But guess what? God delivered you anyway, despite the death you spoke in your own situation. God got you through it anyway, didn't he? You spoke against it. You confirmed the darkness that was working in your life and you were delivered anyway. Take that one, Satan. See, sometimes if you start believing strange things like for some reason all of a sudden you're going to have authority to ruin your own circumstances at a given moment and you're not reflecting upon the truth of your life is what has taken place. What has taken place in your life is the truth. And the truth is your life has been your life and nobody could stop you from living. So nothing that has ever formed against you, even in your days of sin, nothing prospered. It formed, but it did not prosper. Do you hear me? It couldn't take you out. Couldn't stop your existence. If Satan could right now, he'd stop you dead in your tracks. So you could not spread your belief to other folks. He'd stop you right now. Because to, to him, you're like a virus. Because of your faith, you get around other people, you start spreading that same stuff. That works against him. That hinders him. That's his nightmare. Is you. And if he could, he would stop you right now. He'd take you off the face of the earth. But he cannot. He can't do it. Now, we all acknowledge that we have not all been saints in the earth all this time. We already know this. Yet, he still could not overcome us. Now, you guys, no doubt you know about a great many events in the earth. You know about this heat event that's soon to consume just about everybody. Do not misinterpret why the Lord is allowing all these things to take place. Don't misinterpret that and think that somehow you're going to have to run for your life. No, because Christ died that you can have life. Why would he sin or agree to sin an event where he would undo the power of the cross with any storm on this earth? And don't fall for the trick that, oh, well, my neighbor... You know, they got taken out by their that tornado, and that was a pretty nice guy. You really have to look into who people are, because you'd be, you would be floored by the statistical data and the truthful data of who people are and what they go through. God's word is so incredibly consistent. He, he, he's allowing us to have all the tools we need to be nosy about the word of God. We're nosy about UAPs. We're nosy about everything else, but we're not nosy about the word of God like Okay, if God said he's going to watch after his people, who's dying in the world? Investigate so you can be amazed. Stop assuming we don't have to investigate. You have the tool set. I did that one time. I wanted to know because there was a lot of car accidents happening. I said, wait a minute. Surely if a person is saved and, and, and the Lord has a promise for them, then why would he take a person in a car accident all this time? So I got nosy. I get real nosy. I wanted to know about these people that were having all these crashes. What well, put things in perspective? And you'd be shocked to know that a lot of these people, they did not associate their lives with faith. 
They didn't do it. I'm not talking about when you write down what religion you are. No, nope, that's not what I'm talking about. I got real notes. I wanted to know if the people who were going undergoing these crises actually honestly believed. You know, did they did they really believe? Were they, you know, really believing in Christ, living their lives accordingly? Nope, they were not. The ones that were that were in car accidents, they can't remember anything from the car accident. Some people who have been in a car accident, it's very difficult for them, right, to unfortunately get the car accident because of the transition that took place. Because sometimes a person will have an accident and they'll tell you straight to your face, the only reason I'm alive is because of the Lord, because everything else failed. They couldn't get me out. I should have died, but I did not. I had some experience. Or some, that's when Christians go through something like that. And that's what they remember. They always have a story. And this is before they get serious. But the other folks, the, what do you call them? Hell raisers. No mercy. No mercy. No mercy. There are people in the hospital right now who have been in car accidents who are hell raisers. They remember the pain of what they went through so much so they have lost their minds. If you remembered all of your pain, I mean the physical pain, you would be a crazy person right now. Can you imagine being able to recall the level of pain you went through to feel it again? Because if you could remember that, you would experience that pain again. That's what happened to those people. It was that traumatic. And when you talk to people about them and they start telling you the truth about how they live their lives, they were hell raisers, deviants. The Christians, God has truly been merciful. I remember those kids with ISIS. Remember they died? Remember they were beheaded? And people read that article and people heard about that story and they were like, oh no. And they felt so weak in their faith. Then they somebody got hold of a video and the kids were smiling to the very time they were beheaded. They would not renounce Christ. The kids were in, they were peaceful. Children were peaceful right before their beheading. Who can do that? How'd that happen with a child? How can a child have that established peace in Christ. Christ did that. The Lord did that. The children did not do it. The Lord did that. What about the parents? There's so many things that happened during the time of ISIS. And when you get nosy behind these situations to see, because they talk about it now in a lot of cases, oh my, the Lord worked a work greater than you know. With ISIS, ISIS was evil and is evil. But the people who encountered ISIS, who kept their faith, oh my. Even the people who lost their children, their faith has doubled. Go figure that one out. Because they now see the truth. They're not hindered by falsehoods anymore. Falsehoods can hinder you. They really can. They can slow your life down. They can take away and detract from your life. When you believe in fairy tales and falsehoods, the truth truly makes you free. You know in the Bible when it says, if you continue in my word, you be my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Not set you free, make you free. When you start seeing the truth, when you know that truth, freedom is always with it. What entraps us is when we have falsehoods. We're trying to make sense of a half-truth, half-falsehood. Destabilizes your mindset and everything else. When you have the truth, you know the resolve is the Messiah. That's when you have confidence in his resolve. That's the day you have no more anxieties. And anxiety is a tough thing to deal with in this day and age. But I'm telling you right now with the Messiah, there is no anxiety. There's not. And with the situations that are coming forward, and the dynamic of these situations coming forward, anxieties are going to be in an all-time high. Remember what the word said, right? People are going to be turning people in. Kids are going to turn against their parents. That's already happening, is it not? Parents, you are in the household. But it's almost like you're estranged to your kids. Your kids are in the household, but you may not see them. How many people still eat as a family? How many people eat three meals a day as a family, sitting at one table, talking? That's almost non-existent. It's almost non-existent. These things are happening. People are undergoing these things. And the unfolding is taking place right before your eyes. Great chastisements are coming, yes. But that means the spirit of the living God is going to work efficiently and effectively through all of us because the whole thing is about you it's about your deliverance god's not doing this to entrap you to catch you when you're not ready that's not what he's doing the only reason all these things are starting to happen right now is because people are truly ready you're considering the cost of a great many things you're not blindly right going into these situations anymore you're contemplating your lord and just about everything you do 
There are snares to your left and to your right, on top and the bottom, behind you and in front of you. But the Lord is guiding you through them all. He's doing that. He is. But again, so I'm going to give you this warning because right now they open up a big can of worms. I mean a big one. They're going to gauge by way of social media, conversations, open conversations, how the public is responding to what's going on. Watch the news articles tomorrow. They're not going to fully gauge the feedback of the populace this time because they're on a timeline and it's not their timeline. Whether you believe it or not, these guys, they're honest people working in certain places of massive darkness, but they have bosses and their bosses believe in Satan and they're going by Satan's timeline. And all his minions are starting to come forward in all their many different forms. Listen to me, you cannot be touched because of your faith in Christ. So long as you have your faith in Christ, the Lord's word stands for you. So stand on the word of God with everything. Don't lose it now. Don't give up now. This is a good season to say this because it feels like nothing is happening. I can almost, I, I, look, I'll say this presumptuously. You just walk. Feels like nothing is happening, right? Yeah, we're dealing with the heat, but nothing, nothing is happening. Watch it change. Maybe it'll be an example of how quickly things can go from zero to a thousand. Because if you saw a massive change that nobody forecast, nobody's predicting, not really associated with anything, but it kind of you know, be a jolt, the wake up call, correct? So long as it's not associated with everything else, right? Be a good demonstration of how fast things can happen. You live in a time where humanity is going to be faced with a challenge they never saw coming. And it's going to happen at a time when they are relaxed. Remember what the Word of God said? When they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them as a woman that travail up with child. When they say peace and safety, listen, that's when they declare that they have a path forward. Then sudden destruction will come upon them. They have never said that before. They never said that. Also take note. And the Bible says, he shall, through peace, he shall destroy many. Peace in today's world is a compromise. It's to include all things corruptible or not. To ensure peace, let everybody exercise their own thing. That's one of the destructive forces on the world right now, and that's happening right before you. Through peace, to have peace and safety, what do they say? Peace and security. But in truth, it's peace and safety, is it not? They say that every single week. They're allowing people to do anything they want to do, so long as they have peace. The world is becoming highly iniquitous because of all the practices they are allowing. All these practices, for the sake of what peace, are issues with immigration, you know, these political issues. For the sake of peace, they're doing what? They're destroying people. They're killing people for the sake of peace. I was looking at some of the young people who are dying in the world due to an identity crisis. And the medical price, not, not money price, but the price called life is, is very high. It's astounding how many young people are dying through body alterations. And you will hear that this upcoming week. It's been a lot of young kids dying from body alterations. Through peace, you shall destroy many. All the violence that we see, all this violence in America, violence in France, what we already talked about. Nobody should be surprised about France. Nobody should be surprised. Well, you might be surprised because the UK just might have a nuclear issue, a big nuclear issue. In, in fact, they, it's a high probability they're going to have a nuclear nightmare here soon. But uh, we're not too far behind them. The USA is not too far behind. We have too many facilities unguarded. It's something you should expect. We live in a time where terrorists have gone silent. They've only gone silent to get their placement in different countries. That's a known fact. And while they're exploiting this topic of UAPs, trying to get people to stumble at their faith, there's a lot of chatter. The East Coast of the USA, you might want to wake up very quickly. The UK, even quicker. The king over there, in those parts, those people, you're going to have to experience distresses because they keep praising people. That will be reversed. But I'm telling you now, in order to reverse that, in order to get people to actually, by way of their hearts, look to the Most High again, it's going to take a catastrophe that consumes many. Hope you guys know that. It will. And only then will people consider that man cannot do anything for them. Losses will have to be had in the USA. 
because people will not give up their mantle of praising men in the earth. Only through loss are people humbled again to the point where they start looking to a higher power as their source of existence. In order for that to happen, a loss of life must be experienced. It's almost like mankind is bringing things upon themselves, and that may sound a little old in the way it's used, but it's almost like mankind will not consider the Lord until they're out of alternatives. And in this hour that we're in right now, it's almost like a voice saying, so be it. They will be out of alternatives. The Father is interested in the salvation of souls. He will afford humanity every opportunity so they can truthfully consider, because everybody has a moment of clarity where they can actually choose Christ in a moment of clarity. There's not a person who's going to live in a state of confusion not being able to choose the Messiah in truth. That means they have to know who he is. They, de- they have to know exactly who he is. They have to know good from evil. That moment of clarity is something that God will afford every single man and woman on this earth. He'll afford them that opportunity. And in that moment, that's their moment of choice. And they will choose truthfully. If they're evil, truly evil, they'll choose against the Messiah. If they belong to Christ, they'll choose the Messiah in that moment. That moment comes for the cost. Men have to be positioned for that moment to come. So long as man is distracted, they'll never consider. So long as they have a Savior right in front of them, they'll never look to anything else external, the one they already believe in. So what does the Lord do? What did he do historically? Whenever that happened to a society, what did he do? He removed the people they believed in, didn't he? He shamed the system they trusted in, didn't he? That's what he did historically. And in the Bible it says God's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He changes not. So now you know what to expect. Because the Lord's concerned about the souls of humanity. And they won't hear until distractions are taken out of the way. Last thing I'm going to say is, guess what? Sometimes we have a hard time hearing Sometimes we will not consider. God made us a promise too. He said we're going to consider it perfectly. That's what he said in the Old Testament. We're going to consider it perfectly. Now perfectly means if God said we're going to consider it perfectly, that means without error. You know what that means? In order in order for mankind to ever do that, that means God will remove everything that's in your way of being humble, of being meek, of being totally his. Everything in your life that competes with Christ. Everything that keeps drawing you away from Christ has to go. Everything. See, God gave us a season to get, you know, to do it ourselves, didn't he? He did give us a season. He put it in our spirits. He called for us. It was like a cry. All the events in the world happening, that was a cry. That was a plea for us to fully consider. But guess what? What are we saying? I can't do it right now. God works in the realm of truth, not deceit. He's not like a lawyer. There's no small print. If we choose between darkness and light, we are first presented with darkness and light. We have to identify it is darkness and light because we cannot choose of a thing we're not familiar with. The problem is we have so many things in the way. We have put so many things before him. So in this season also, Everything that's been in the way has to be removed. Judgment starts in the house of God. You have to be in position first before he unleashes a heaviness in the world. You must be in position. You must be secure. You have to be on the ark. He allowed us to see the ark. He showed us where the platform was to get up the ark. We know how to do everything, but we continue to say, I can't fully commit to that right now. So anything that's been in the way of your choice of fully getting on the ark, it has to be removed so that you can clearly see everything of the ark, everything of the circumstance, so you can have clear understanding. And the way we have clear understanding is when God removes everything that competes against his truth. Because we have to be afforded an opportunity to choose. And to choose in righteousness is to choose in an environment where there's no deceit. So another moment of clarity is coming. But before it comes, all that we refused to put down. You know how when a parent says, hey, put the toys down, come and eat. We wouldn't come and eat. We said, oh, no, let me play this last game. 
Oh, no, let me do this one last thing. And so guess what he's doing? He's coming to put the toys away. He's going to take the toys out of your life so nothing is in your way. In truth, none of us can complain because he's given us ample time. He told us countless times. But many of us, we kept saying, not yet. One more game. Once you're secure, then the heaviness comes to the world. That heaviness, that heaviness is not coming until the children of the living God have been given a pure opportunity to be absolutely secure in the ark. So, don't let things shock you because all the toys have to go in this moment also. But before you say that's hard, that's nothing compared to what's about to happen to the world. The people in the world that said no, they have to have their moment of clarity also. Even the ones that said no, they're going to have a moment of clarity. They have to be able to choose in righteousness also. So anything that was in their way of seeing has to be removed. Anything that was in the way of them hearing must be removed. Anything that stopped them from traveling towards that call must be removed. That's a lot of removal. And in fact, we read about that in all prophecy, don't we? We read about that in Revelation, don't we? How many things are removed from the face of the earth? So don't let prophecy surprise you. These things are necessary. They're all necessary. And that time has finally come. And the processes have already begun. But if you can choose on your own, right? When a parent calls a child to come and eat, and before they finish saying, come and eat, the child shows up at the feet, there's no need for the parent to go and take away toys. Why? Because at any given moment, based upon the call of the parent, the child is ready to walk away from everything they have. That's a good child. Hopefully you have that. When a parent calls, a good child is ready to walk away from everything. To heed the call of the parent, that's a good child. And just in case you didn't notice, we're still but children. But the Lord's processes are beginning. So don't think they're against you because they're not. They may seem one way. You better believe all the reasoning is held in righteousness. And if it's not necessary, God will never perform it. Because he does not work in vanities. Be a smart child, right? You know how some people say, well, you know, I learned by experience. You don't have to learn by experience. You can learn through the stupidity of others what not to do in this world. If I saw a person who was uh, beaten with many stripes, I'm going to ask that person, what do they do? And that's the very thing I will not do. I don't have to be beaten with many stripes to accept the truth, especially from the Lord. Don't no, just give me an example. And I'm not going to be like that guy. I'm just not going to do it. Right? You, you can learn one of two ways. You can do it with your hearing and walk it out. Or you can experience it yourself. But with so many examples in the earth, there's really no reason to have to experience these things yourself. But if you don't believe those who come forward with experience, and you don't at least consider it matching it with the word of God, right? Well, you have to go through it. Because one way or another, you will be a vessel of truth, right? A truth houses truth. That truth is gained through truthful situations. But if I were you, I would I would hear what the Lord was saying. I really wouldn't. I'd hear what he was saying. Not challenge him. Hear him. Hear him and trust him so that he can show you how things work. We become incredibly dependent upon technology. And we shouldn't have done that. Because with the sun doing what it's doing. Listen, they've already told people. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's going to be an outage, a big one. There's going to be an outage. And um, listen, I'm not saying there's a probability. There is going to be an outage. There will be an outage. I hope you heard that. I'm not talking about probabilities. I'm not talking about something that could happen. I'm telling you what is going to happen. There will be an outage. There's going to be an outage. And do you know a power outage and a communications outage is the most dangerous thing we could ever face. It is the most dangerous thing we could ever face. See, it's one thing having a power outage, but the cell phones are working, right? That's one thing. It's another to have a power outage and a communications blackout at the same time. That can only be caused by the sun, correct? That's what you've been taught. It can only be caused by the sun. Everybody looks towards a Carrington event. Well, let me share this with you. Everybody knows that North Korea can now launch ICBMs into the upper atmosphere, correct? So let's go ahead and break it to you because this is what they're expecting right now at any given moment that they could launch a weapon 
into space. But instead of a nuclear, it'll be a nuclear weapon, small grays. And once it explodes and the EMP is going to emanate from that device, period. Now, there are hardened shields against EMPs. But the problem is you can't get everything. And if anything is hooked up to those volatile circuits, it is then volatile no matter what safeguards you took. They have fast circuitry in the USA right now. All power companies are on permanent standby in the USA right now. The excuse is going to be weather and the hot climate. In Germany, same thing. All over the world is going to be the same thing. The truth of it is they suspect and do expect an EMP. You remember all the EMP threats that they were giving and everybody was like, oh, we're going to get an EMP and this, that, and the other. The properties of the actual EMPs that have been run under these tests are highly misunderstood. But if you knew about the characteristics, you could at least divert that power. They have a new method of deployment for EMPs. A brand new method of deployment. See, they're always doing that. They always have these new weapons that people, we, the world just found out about a specific weapon at the beginning of last month. Does that help you out? That's why these reports and things start coming forward. Because it made real what people suspected. At the beginning of last year, they suspected something. Right? But only this year do they actually know that those suspicions were right on the money. And so they had to take steps immediately. Now you know. And they did act on that immediately. Do you guys also know there's been a presidential warning of that? Hope you know that. Not what you expected either. No big lights, dazzling you know, confirmed times that it would be on, but there was presidential confirmation of this. And if you missed it, you just missed it. You're just being ready for these things. Don't have fear. Don't live your life by fear. If you have energy, look for solutions for the sake of those around you. You want to find a good solution and start loving those around you. Be willing to do anything for them and God will fill you with what needs to be done for all of you. That's how he works. You try to think of only yourself, you're not going to get very far. You start thinking of those you love. And within righteousness, you dedicate yourself for their causes to keep them safe and to do whatever the Lord has given you a responsibility to do. He will be your resolve in every situation. And you will end up helping so many. <laughs>